Good evening and welcome to the August 16th, 2021 work session of the Worcester City Schools Board of Education. Amy, if you would call the roll, please. Mrs. Herman. Here. Mr. Stabneser. Here. Dr. Boone. Here. Dr. Kanapik. Here. Ms. Schantz. Here. All right. Um, we're going to go straight to um, reports. We don't have any new business for the consent agenda um, for the superintendent. All of that has been moved to next Tuesday's meeting. Um, so we have reports 3.01 online er learning op option and a COVID update. So I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Tudor. All right. Thank you, Madam President. Um, just wanted to give you an update on where we are with our um, online learning option. We're calling it the Worcester um, uh, Online Academy. Um, not the most creative title, but I think it gets the job <laughs> done. Um, and so we, we ended up having uh, 40 students in grades K through six sign up and 102 in grades seven through 12. So 142 total uh, students um, they really feel really good about that number in two mm -hmm. different ways. Um, it's a manageable number to provide support um, with, uh, with the level of staffing I think we can commit to. And at the same time, um, you know, obviously, as I've said from the beginning, I feel for most people, uh, in-person learning is the best option. Mm -hmm. But there were some families that definitely felt that this was best, and, you know, that's why we created that option. And, um, you know, we definitely had enough to take advantage of it that I think it, it, it's, a, it's a worthwhile right. endeavor for mm -hmm. us. Um, you know, remember, there is a couple of caveats with that. They have until um, they only they, they had, you know, a few days to make that decision. They are committed to that for the first trimester in, in grades K through four mm -hmm. and semester for the first semester. Okay. Um, and, uh, and then, um, at the same time, we do have, we do have rights, uh, in terms of pulling them back in. Uh, it's not that we're trying to do that or that's our number one goal, um, but we need people to do well. And if we get situations where kids are really floundering in that environment, mm -hmm. uh, we are going to, you know, request that they, they, they come back in person. Um, so, uh, high school, like I said, uh, seven through 12, they'll use Edgenuity, K through six, we'll use Acellus. Um, and so um, we feel, we feel uh, very, very good about that. Uh, that group, so those 142 families that signed up for that, got an email tonight or t earlier today um, with information just about, um, you know, when they'll find out how they pick their classes, uh, when they pick up their Chromebooks uh, or uh, MacBooks. Uh, fr Friday, there will be a pickup. Um, for that, I think at 10 o'clock, and 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 they're starting to get it, they'll start getting more um, communication from uh, Mrs. Richard and Mr. Madigan on those things. So, um, kind of rolling with that pretty well. The ac academy won't start until Monday officially. Just getting you know getting them their you know technology they need, um, getting getting them all registered and online and those kind of things. It will take a little bit of time to do that. So they will um, they will have that and, and that'll be ready for Monday. So. Um, Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, Mr. Tudor, do you have a sense of from the seven through twelve group? Typically, how many? Because some students normally do the online. Do you have so, any sense of that? So that hundred and two is not our GA. Is not our. It's separate. It's okay. separate. Gotcha. So, and we we tried okay. to make sure we under, you know we okay. clarified that is you know our our GA okay. our opportunity school is is a really a school within a school that. Um, specific kids that have kind of been identified through our RTI process and other things mm -hmm. that, you know, kind of go into GA. And a lot of times there's, they, they do a work component and some other things with that. This is truly like they just wanted to, to stay home. Uh, they use the same program. Our GA director uh, will still monitor their progress mm -hmm. and then we'll provide tutoring support either out of GA or with an additional person, depending on the needs. Um, but, you know, it, it's its own separate Thing. I think the numbers are a little higher in seven through twelve, just naturally by the age of the students. Mm -hmm, you know, sure. you you do get right. more kids at that age that that's just what they prefer. Yeah. Um, and as long as they do well with it, we're glad that we can provide that opportunity mm -hmm. and and you know they can kind of go about other things in their day and their life that works for them while they you know get their get their schooling done. The, the good news is we have such a strong um, system up there with our GA Academy or, and our structures. I think we can handle that group. Mm -hmm. I think if we would have had 150 at the K 
four level, right. that would have been more stressful just because of right. kind of the nature of what they're doing mm -hmm. and also the experience of those kids and things like that. So um, feel, feel pretty, um, pretty good about that. Okay, good. Um, and then the only other thing I have on update is, is obviously related to our public participation tonight. Uh, just in terms of a, uh, of a COVID update, um, uh, you know, we, we, we had, um, our cases are going up in the county, still relatively low, but we are in high incidence according to the CDC at this point. Okay. Um, and um, uh, we have had, in the last couple of weeks, we've had a couple cases within the school community, either mm -hmm. employees or students. Now, you might wonder why you're not getting that nice email that you got like every day there for <laughs> yeah. a while last year. Um, and that's, uh, we checked specifically with the Ohio Department of Health if that was still a requirement. Um, and it's not. Mm -hmm. And so just because of the cumbersome nature of, right. of doing that, um, we, we are not. Now, are we communicating contract tracing and things like that? If anybody would be impacted, of course we are. But just letting mm -hmm. you know that someone in Melrose had COVID, you know, as a community, we're, we're not doing that right now. Okay. Um, and uh, I talked to Nick there at the um, health department, and he did not see, he, he did not think that that was something we needed to do either. Okay. At this point. But the okay. health department is still doing contact tracing? So we know? still do contact tracing, obviously, if it's mm -hmm. a student or employee during our time. And the health department does as well. Now, I don't know to what level they right. do. I think it depends on their, their, their busyness. Now, what they do get, though, whether we would report that to the community or not, if we mm -hmm. had a case, they get that information. Mm -hmm. as, a, as a Wayne right. County resident, uh -huh. they get it per the zip code and things like right. that. So. Um, other than that, uh, just we had a great first day today. Yes. Um, opening opening staff meeting was really encouraging. Uh, seeing our staff um, again ready <laughs> to work with kids was awesome. Uh, we had a great speaker, Mike Galena, who was uh, the superintendent of North Canton uh, for several years, uh, did a really nice uh, speaking um, engagement for us, and. Um, it was just exciting. Open yeah. houses were exciting tonight. Got to go to a couple, including my own kids, and <laughs> so it was. Uh, really um, it, it was nice to kind of see um, some uh, return to school today. So yeah. that's yeah, all that's I have, right. I think, for that. It was. It was good um, to see the the pack full of teacher faces, and it was. It was really good to have everybody together. And I had some really good um, exchanges with our employees, and they're they're excited to be back. A little Good. nervous, but excited to yeah. be back and can't wait to see their kids. Good. So, yeah. All right. All right. So I think we'll public go to public participation. Right. We'll at this go point. to public participation, and we're going to let Mrs. Furlong handle that for us. Maybe for those in the community that are just watching and not, um, we you know a lot of times we don't do public participation uh, on a work session. Uh, did it tonight specifically due to um, kind of the discussion around COVID. There's, mm -hmm. you know, been um, some passionate feedback on both sides of, uh, of kind of what to do um, in our schools for students. And so I uh, felt that it was an important thing to do prior to the start of school year. Normally we do public participation at our regular meeting, which will, you know, will continue to occur, mm -hmm. but wanted to do this in kind of a unique way tonight so to, to provide that opportunity. So um, I think we have 10 people speaking um, we had uh, five on each side, and, and, and I think they're going to go in the time stamp of when they uh, submitted, submitted their, their request. Um, and so just, just in case anybody in the community is watching and not sure how, how, what we're doing tonight, that's how, that's how all that occurred. How are we doing the timing on that, Becky? <laughs> According to Robert's Rules of Order, for public participation, you can, have, um, you can allocate up to 20 minutes for public participation and that allows each speaker two minutes so we're gonna we're gonna stick with that 20 minutes um, 10 speakers two minutes so um, and we're, we're you know we're not trying to be rude but that's according to Robert's Rules of Order so okay so thank you board for yet throwing me one more challenge <laughs> <laughs> Because we know you're up to it. <laughs> I did. That's yeah. pretty cool. Whatever. That, yeah, yeah, that's a really cool really screen. Very interesting. Okay. Hi, everybody. So, <laughs> so I've been chatting with the participants so they kind of know oh, what's going on you. here. I have a timer, and I've just told them when we hit the two minutes, I'll probably just mute them if they 
you know, go over the two minutes. If they go two minutes and three seconds, I think we'll let them do that, but we'll, we'll cut them off then. So. Becky, before you get started, yes. is there a way for us? Yes. Yep, I'm gonna do that right now. The person now. who's speaking. Yep. Okay, good. I want to be able to see who, who was talking to us. Yes, so our first um, public participation uh, for this evening is from Dennis Stoffer, and I will let Dennis, you can go ahead and introduce yourself and then um, say your comments. And I don't know, Dennis, just a minute. I think you might be muted. From June, we can't hear you. Hmm. There's a chat on the bottom. Okay, Dennis. Oh, oh there it was. you were there. You're good, Dennis. Can you hear me now? Oh, yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hey, um, I'm Dennis Stauffer. I'm a parent of a kindergartner here at Worcester. Um, and I just had a few comments about the match mandate. Um, just to start off with a few stats, out of all Ohio children ages 5 to 17, only two have died with COVID in the last year and a half, which means 99.997% have survived, and 99% of those didn't even need to go to the hospital. Um, nationwide, more children died from the flu in the 2018-2019 season than died from COVID in an entire year and a half. So it's clearly no more dangerous than the flu, for which we never even considered masking. Not only that, but masks can interfere with learning for our children who have glasses who, and who need to see their teacher's lips. Um, they can trap harmful bacteria, increase carbon dioxide intake, not to mention psychological impacts of something that constantly reminds them of disease and fear. Um, you said you wanted these parents to feel safe when they're sending their children to school, but it's not your role to choose which parents get to decide what's best for their child and which parents do not. For example, if another parent chooses not to have their child vaccinated, neither I nor you can force them to do so, regardless of how safe we think it is. Um, you also said your decision was based on the latest guidance from the CDC, but the CDC has one goal of stopping diseases. A guidance from the CDC should only be one factor among many that you consider when making policy. Hiding behind this guidance is an abdication of the responsibility of evaluating what is best for children holistically. Um, the parents were also not meaningfully involved or considered before the mandate was made. We were never surveyed. There isn't even a clear criteria for ending the mandate. Um, also, for vaccinations, we only need a letter from parents stating that they want to opt out of the vaccination, but for wearing a mask, um, you're requiring a written statement from a religious official that the religion prohibits wearing masks, which is way above the requirement for vaccinations. And just because masks are deemed less than safe... Right. I like that sound. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you. Okay, next up is Nancy Schwartzentruber. So let me get her up here for everybody. We're having a little bit of trouble getting the screen, um, getting video on here, Nancy. If you want to go ahead, if you want to go ahead and get started. Sure. I'd like to speak on behalf of over 1100 community members, including faculty and staff within this school district who are afraid to speak up for fear of retribution about this issue. It's important to note that the group contesting your decision is not anti mask. We're pro freedom of choice and your policy mandating masks is a direct violation of our civil liberties. All other schools in the county are letting their parents decide if masks are appropriate for their children, which is how it should be. The state of Ohio has now passed legislation by veto-proof majority to restrict the governor's powers due to brutal, sustained, and overreaching mandates. Yet you've taken up the mantle to further these unscientific practices 
against the very community who elected you to your positions. When passed this fall, Senate Bill 209 will block your mask mandates and restore freedom of choice back to the parents where it belongs. And let's review some important facts about face masks. And I'd like to note the supporting documents for my facts were sent to your emails earlier today. The fact is you have no legal defensible role in determining health care choices for our children. And in fact, your decision places the school district in dire jeopardy of legal liability and costly litigation. No scientific study exists that show cloth or surgical masks reduce the spread of any viruses. Another fact, lab tests show that cloth masks harbor over 21 strains of harmful bacteria after one, use, one school day's use. Strep, staph, meningitis, pneumonia. Your mandate actually puts our children's health at serious risk. To date, less than 500 US children total under the age of 18 have died from COVID. More children die annually from seasonal flu than have died throughout the entire pandemic. And you've never required masks for flu outbreaks. Another fact, depression, suicides have increased exponentially over the last 18 months in teenagers, which has direct correlation to masking and isolation of children. So I ask you respectfully, is your policy decision to mandate masks really about the health and well-being of our children? Please reconsider your decision. Return the freedom of choice back to the parents where it belongs. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so next up is someone who I do not believe I see on the Zoom. It's Louis Canass, and I do not see him there. So I will move on. After that, um, a Louis L U. I believe he's on there. Next up will be Steve Naughton. What was that last name, Becky? Um, Canas, C A N A S. And um, I will, I, the board has all of the um, comments that have been submitted. So if there's anything that oh. um, you didn't get to hear, um, you have, I've given it to Mrs. Yeah. Herman and we can get that to everybody. Okay, next will be Steve. And let me go ahead and get you spotlighted, Steve, and then, okay you, okay, you can go ahead and get started. Good evening. My name is Stephen Naughton. I'm a small business owner here in Worcester, owning Primal Fitness 24-7 Access Gym, Primal Fitness Personal and Specialized Training, and also Primal Fitness Supplements. I'm a United States Air Force non-commissioned officer veteran, former U.S. Secret Service Special Agent, Rittman School's Strength and Conditioning Coach, and most importantly, a husband and a stepfather. I'm speaking today in opposition to the board's decision on the announced and mitigation procedures. As a child growing up, I witnessed the power growing up in the United States. I witnessed a country that stood apart from all others, a country that stood on the values of freedom, choice, and a sense of pride that no one will ever destroy our rights as free people. As President Reagan said during his inauguration speech, we must realize that there is no arsenal or no weapon in the arsenals of the world that is so formidable as the will and moral courage of free men and women. It is a weapon in today's day and age that our adversaries do not have. As an Air Force Airman, I saw the ravenous effects of what extreme governmental control can do to people and a population. As a federal law enforcement officer, I saw the importance of upholding the law in a fair, balanced, objective, and just manner. The times we are living in are not the times that I remember as a child. Even more concerning, the times we are living in is not the freedoms that I fought for as a military member in our armed forces, and as a law enforcement agent sworn to protect our citizens and way of life. We are a people of choice. We have a choice to wear a mask or not. We have a choice to get a vaccine or not. Never in the history of our free country have mandates gone so far to affect life at this level based off of something that is a personal health choice. If we are basing a mask mandate for our children under the recommendations of the CDC, where's the mandate under the recommendations as written by the American Heart Association for individuals to get at least 150 minutes per week of moderate to intense aerobic activity or 75 minutes per week of vigorous and high intensity muscle strength activity. If we are truly talking a matter of disease prevention and public health, the people of our city, county, state, and nation deserve to know why we are choosing one health recommendation over another. I'd also like to point out that. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Next up will be Luke Parthamore. Oh, 
Just a second, Luke, we'll get you spotlighted here. Okay, you can go ahead and get started. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello, my name is Luke Parthmore. I'm on a Christmas run. I'm a scientist and member of the American Society for Testing Materials. Thank you, members of the board, for taking this active position and providing a safe environment for our kids. Unfortunately, the amount of misinformation is too much to delve into and rebut point by point in two minutes. However, I do believe some core facts need to be specified in order to have a conversation. One, SARS-CoV-2 is a single novel, highly contagious coronavirus that is mainly spread via the air. At least 50% of transmission is from asymptomatic or presymptomatic persons. Two, Delta has become the dominant strain in the US. It is more than twice as infectious, and as of two weeks ago, 14% of all COVID-19 cases were children. Three, vaccines are still effective, but not as effective versus the Delta, and no vaccine is available for anyone under 12. Four, masks are a scientifically proven, cheap, simple, and easy mitigation step. Masks do not block oxygen, they do not trap carbon dioxide. Currently, 15 states in DC and numerous counties and cities have put mandatory masks in place for school this fall. How are masks effective? Basic multi-layer cloth masks block as much as 50 to 70% of exhaled aerosols and particles. In some studies, cloth masks have even proved as effective as surgical masks. They also form a barrier to large droplets that can partially filter out some of the particles coming in. If universal masking is in place, the chance of one child infecting another is less than 1%. Universal masking is our main prevention measure for protection with in-person education. Having a voluntary mask policy is akin to having a no peeing section of a pool or a no smoking section in an airplane. The American School District in Arkansas had 4,000 students and within two weeks of school starting, they had 43 positive cases and 839 students and staff that were in quarantine. As stated by numerous studies, the CDC, WHO, American Academy of Pediatrics, masking is an effective way to spread, reduce the spread of this disease and help keep our children safe, as well as have them in in-person education. Not only is this the education important, but practically most of us wouldn't be able to continue with our jobs without in-person publicly funded education for our children. Thank you for doing your part to ensure the safety and well-being of our children. Thank you, Luke. Thank you, Luke. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Luke. Next up is Kristen. Fire up. Thank you. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Fireman. <laughs> Let me get you spotlighted, Christine, and then you can, or Kristen, and then you can go ahead and get started. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. <clears throat> okay, thank you all for allowing me to speak today. My name is Kristen Fireabend. I live on Sandalwood Drive, and I have twins in second grade at Melrose. I'm a chemist working at the College of Worcester. So earlier in my career, I spent a decade working in industry for both Gojo and a pharmaceutical company where I dealt with the FDA. My scientific background and experiences have led me to trust in medical professionals and public health officials, such as those in the American Academy of Pediatrics and the CDC. These experts are continuously evaluating research on COVID and are calling for universal masking in our schools. Over 1,900 children are currently hospitalized with COVID in the U.S and the number of new pediatric COVID cases and hospitalizations is increasing at a dramatic rate, especially in states with low vaccination rates comparable to Wayne County's 36%. Some may say 1,900 hospitalizations is a small number, but none of us should accept even a slight chance of our children or teachers being hospitalized when we can require masking and reduce that risk. Additionally, in recent days, we are seeing the consequences of school districts opening for operation without mask mandates. For example, Palm Beach County, Florida had 137 positive, or 134 positive cases in the first two days of school, forcing a quarantine of hundreds more students. In its first nine days, Pickens County, South Carolina had 140 positive cases, resulting in one hospitalized student and four hospitalized staff. The entire district is pivoting to virtual learning. I know that our family struggled with the school disruptions last year, and I'm sure that all parents and teachers in Worcester want to keep our children in the classrooms this year. Worcester City Schools' best tool right now to ensure that our schools stay open um, and that our community stays healthy is requiring everyone to wear masks and for those that are eligible to be vaccinated. Thank you for your dedication to our children's safety and education. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Kristen. Next up is James Dewan. So James, I will get you spotlighted here and then we can get started. 
Okay, James, you're good. It, it, it will work the drive. One thing I hear from everyone, regardless of what side they are, is that no one likes to wear masks, and no one wants our kids in masks, but we have no other choice. Let's start with that common ground and explore other mitigation strategies. Legitimate virologists and doctors have differing thoughts on the best ways to mitigate the spread of COVID-19. I sent the board a video from a certified air hygienist and administrator of a school with 600 students and 200 plus faculty and staff in Columbus, Ohio, who implemented these strategies without masking or social distancing the entire 2021 school year, with no COVID traces traced back to the school. I received no feedback or response. As of earlier today, I emailed the board more documents, studies, and statements to consider along these lines. I would respectfully ask that you read them and let's have further dialogue about them. A few weeks ago, I had the privilege of teaching one of the groups of kids at our annual safety town run by our Kiwanis Club. What I'm about to say is in no way an official statement or position of the Kiwanis Club, merely they are my thoughts and observations from the week. We had four groups of approximately 27 kids each. In each group, there were about four to eight students per group that wore masks and the others did not. This is reflected with the community you serve. The week went extremely well, all the kids enjoyed themselves, and to my knowledge in checking the ODH website, no kids are being sick and overrun in the hospital in Wayne County. All I'm advocating for is letting parents choose what's best for their child. To make sure I wasn't speaking for my child, I asked my second grader last week how he'd feel about wearing a mask again. First he yelled no, then started crying and said, don't remind me. I hated it, we all hated it. Well, except for two kids, they actually liked it. We have amazing online options for those who don't feel comfortable sending their kids and many families I know prefer that environment. Our kids have been playing sports together all summer, attended Y camp, camp invention and summer school with no issues. Every teacher and 12 year old on up has had the opportunity to be vaccinated if they want. Let's explore these other mitigation strategies first and foremost, give them a try and allow parents to choose what they feel is best for their child and give these kids every opportunity for normalcy before more families leave the district. Thank you. Thank you, James. Thank you. Okay, next up is Nell Reardon. And now I'm gonna get you spotlighted here for everyone. And I'm gonna un I'm gonna ask to unmute you now. You're muted. So can you unmute? Okay. Oh. And I'm a grandmother of four Worcester City School students, one of whom cannot get vaccinated. What we know is that we want our kids in school. What we also know is that we want our kids to be safe and we want to keep our, ki our schools open. That's, that's the best. What we also know is that we can turn to trusted sources to help us determine the best way to realize these goals of keeping our kids safe and our schools open. And those trusted sources we worked with all last year, it would be Akron Children's Hospital, the American Academy of Pediatrics. These are both organizations full of people who devoted their entire professional careers to keeping kids safe. And I think that we can all agree that they, their real interest is the best interest of young people. So what we need to do is follow their direction and their direction is for kids to be masked, for adults around those children to be masked and that provides a safe environment for which we can continue to keep our kids in school. I kind of look at this as an opportunity for our community to come together. We can su support the school board in its effort to only keep schools open and to keep our kids safe. I don't see an ulterior motive here. I think that's what they want and it's in the best interest of all the kids in the Worcester City School System. As far as kids are Thank you, Nell. Thank you, Nell. 
Next up is Jessica Williams. And I am not sure, but I do not see Jessica on this evening. So we will skip hers and go to um, what I believe is our last one for this evening, and it is Arturo Machado. And so Arturo, I'm gonna spotlight you here so that everyone can see you. Okay, you're good to go. All right. Welcome, Lord Jesus. Good evening. My name is Arturo Machado. I hope that by now all of you have received and read a letter that I emailed to each one of you last week. The same letter has been entered in the public petition format as well. Plenty of data exists in the public health sector, the scientific community, government and non-government agencies concerning the effectiveness or lack of effectiveness of face masking as a deterrent to COVID-19 and its variants. I will not address the debate here. On the basis of our constitutional rights, today I would like to make an appeal to the school board to reconsider the recently released face mask policy for students and staff members of the Worcester City School District. This mask mandate, as it is labeled in your policy, is a violation of our constitutional rights and the principles embodied in the Constitution, in the Declaration of Independence, both at the federal and state level. It is contradictory to federal and state guidelines as both of them have clearly abstained from issuing any such mandates. It promotes an atmosphere of fear and distrust. It is divisive, it is counterproductive, it is wasteful because it may trigger student migration to other districts and venues as well as potential legal action. The Board of Education needs to realize that there is no one more qualified to make decisions concerning their children than the parents themselves. There is no one more qualified to make decisions about the well-being of the district staffers than the staffers themselves. We are asking respectfully but sternly that each one and every member of this school board goes on record and speak clearly about their position and reasoning behind the policy. A simple yay or nay is not sufficient. We are asking respectfully but sternly to drop this policy. Finally, as a trained engineer and somebody that has extensive scientific and research background, I will be glad to participate in extended discussions on this topic and the implementation of alternative technical solutions in a more appropriate format. A two-minute speech. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's all for this evening. All right. Thank, thank you, Mr. Furlong. Yeah. Thank you so much to each one of you who've prepared um, and um, obviously your, your passion is, is evident to each one of us. So thank you so much for um, engaging with us in this way. Okay, anything? Yeah, board, I would just, I would just echo that. Say? Just to appreciate uh, everyone taking the time to, um, you know, um, use this opportunity to express their, their, their feelings. I, right. You know, I, um, I just think that's, um, says a lot about our community when mm -hmm. people are willing to take the time out to l truly prepare for that on, on mm -hmm. both sides and, mm -hmm. and, and do that. I, I'm, you know, um, I'm, I'm grateful for that. So yeah, yeah. Anybody on the, else on the board want to comment? Okay. All right. We will move on to um, well, the regular agenda for the superintendent looks empty. Um, <laughs> So we'll we'll move to 5.01. Um, I need a motion to suspend Robert's rules of order. So moved. Second. All right. Amy, if you'd call the roll. Mr. Stabnezer? Yes. Dr. Boone? Yes. Mrs. Herman? Yes. Dr. Kanapik? Yes. Ms. Schantz? Yes. All right. Moving on to 6.01. We are in work session. So um, review of the August board agenda on board doc. Okay, so um, as of right now, it looks to be somewhat of a, a light agenda, which would not be too abnormal for August. Mm -hmm. Most of our hiring is done, um, and I'll go into that in a minute. Uh, student recognitions won't start until um, September, September, which we'll look mm -hmm. forward to that, um, mm -hmm. to, getting, to getting that going again. So um, as of right now, I don't have any report other than I probably will, as we said, because technically uh, at our last regular meeting, we said we would review um, our COVID policies and go through all of that data at least once a month at the regular meeting. So I will do a report 
on that that you know uh, can lead to questions as well for, from you guys at that time. Okay. Um, Ms. Amy, do you want to share the uh, what's going on in new business for you? Um, just regular agenda items uh, for the meeting next week, but the only report that I will share is probably an update on the new uh, funding model that we talked about at retreat that I will provide an update um, as we move forward with that at every board meeting. So yeah. that, at this time, that is the only agenda Sounds item. That's good. Thank you. Um, personnel, um, we have one maternity leave right now, no other resignations. Um, do have several employments. If you look at our certified mm -hmm. employments, have several of those. Um, several contract subs. You might, you know, in the community, you might wonder what's the difference? What's a contract sub? What's a long term sub? And what's an employee? So they're all employees and they're all just as important. It's really just the manner of their, their time uh, and the the guarantee of a job in the future. Mm -hmm. So a contract sub is someone that is working over 60 days. Um, and so they will make the rate of a regular teacher, um, but it ends at the time of their contract ending. Contract subs are normally for, you know, people that are gonna be out for, for an extended period of time, maybe a, a year maternity leave or different things like that. That's a contract sub. A long-term sub is when we know somebody's gonna be here uh, for a while, but not a long enough time to get past the 60 days. Uh, and they're, they're paid the sub rate. You might wonder why the 60 days, well, that's state law. Mm -hmm. So that's when that kind of takes place. And then obviously we have, you know, uh, employment things as we've done here as well. So, um, you know, you'll, you'll see many of them really excited about the people that we've got to, to put in these positions. Uh, you know, late in the year, um, you know, I just was really excited to have the interest we did with quality candidates. Mm -hmm. A couple things I would note, uh, Jennifer Snowbarger it has moved into the GA director mm -hmm. position. It was made Sorry. vacant when Doug Haas um, moved on to a new uh, position. We filled Jennifer Snowbarger's position with a one-year contract sub, mm -hmm. somebody you might recognize, uh, Ms. Pittard, who was a yes. retired teacher <laughs> from uh, Worcester High School. I saw um, her today. I, said, I thought you were gone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're very thankful to have her because uh, Ms. Snowbarger was the math teacher in yeah. uh, NGA. Yeah. So, um, and so that's kind of what we have there for certified, classified. Um, we have one resignation, a bus driver, uh, Mr. Craig Miller. Um, and then we have um, several classified employments. Not all of these employments are um, new hires, they're new positions. Mm -hmm. um, and so it looks like there's more new people on here than there are. A lot of these are positions being transferred to, you know, um, like, uh, you know, Deb Brown, for example, she's a specialized parapro. She's been an employee here 15 years. She just moved to a different position mm -hmm. in the midday. So uh, that's what a lot of those positions are. So mm -hmm. um, also under my regular uh, agenda there, um, we have, uh, we'll probably have more handbooks on the agenda by that time. That's the high school handbook. We'll probably have mm -hmm. more handbooks as most of them are uh, approved in August. N not a lot of significant changes uh, in the handbooks on any of the any of the buildings, but you know, with new principles and all that, mm -hmm. there you know there will be a few few tweaks. Partly just simply names will be a, um, a tweak yeah. there. Um, several special ed situations there, uh, payment in lieu of for transportation, mm -hmm. um, uh, behavior health. All of those are that same concept I've mentioned at many meetings where um, finance it just does not make sense for us or the student based on their best environment for us to serve their disability needs. Right. Um, so. I can tell you we want to serve as many as we can. Mm -hmm. We want our kids here uh, with our teachers and for 99% of our student population, that works well. Mm -hmm. For a small group, it just it just doesn't. Sometimes it doesn't forever, sometimes it doesn't for a short period of time mm -hmm. until they maybe have a developmental change or whatever, um, but that's what those are for. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and other than that, that's, that's pretty much what I have on the agenda right pretty now. Pretty good, all right. So I'll go back to my <laughs> to my agenda. <laughs> Join the meeting. Okay. Um, committee reports. Anybody you got anything to share? Um, Wayne County Schools Career Center has a community day on September 18th. Um, and if you haven't been there, it's really fun. They kind of have a car show, um, yeah. and it's you know community day because it's there's food and it's just it's kind of a fun place to go and if you've never been inside the career center it's a really mm -hmm. nice it's place impressive. to check out yeah. um, 
and they have a lot of things that they provide there. But um, that's, I, I hope I get it right. I don't remember what time it starts. I believe the car show starts early in the morning. Yeah. Like kind of an 8.30 area, but. Um, Did you say what day it was? But it's I think it's September 18th. It's September. Communi it's all community day. day. Yeah, it's okay. all day. Um, and, yeah. and the for, culinary students ooh, break everything out. Yeah, they've got good food. Yeah. Yeah, good food. Um, so. And actually the report from the Career Center is that Every, almost every area of study is filled except for a couple, mm -hmm. which is great to see after, you know, some of the, some yeah. of the down numbers. So I just mm -hmm. want to share that really good news with our yeah. Career Center. Yeah. Um, and for people interested, uh, they are hosting vaccine um, clinics there. So, yeah. but fun day. I know I took my son a, year, a couple years ago. Is this is the cleanest school I've ever seen. <laughs> um, but he was able to go in every lab, and you can go in the dentistry lab, and cool. you can see the robotics, and yeah. it's it's really a neat place to the see. The large um, animal. Actually, got, I think we you know. we both welded that day. So yeah. But yeah. if you're interested, it's for the whole family, and um, I thought we had a great time. Yeah. Wish we could have spent longer. So yeah. There, I I'm. Re-impressed all the time by the work that that we do at the Career Center. It's it's a good place. It's a good place. Mm -hmm. So, anything else? Anybody? Um, just trying to think about some of our um, committees. Our property committee will actually be meeting um, next week. Okay. Um, uh, we've kind of, with Mike Forrest's resignation, mm -hmm. we kind of have paused that a little bit. We're excited to get that started again. We've also. Um, offered a position, uh, he will not start until um, August 27th, but mm -hmm. offered a position to, who will be on the agenda next week, uh, a maintenance supervisor. Mm -hmm. um, so really excited uh, about that. Like I said, we did kind of restructure that position a little bit. Um, Mike Four was kind of overall in charge of several supervised or classified um, positions or um, sections. This is only maintenance, so this person will be able to really focus on maintenance. And, and, and so they'll good. be a big part of that as well. BAC will meet. Uh, I meet with uh, Mr. Allen to kind of talk about the um, the BAC annual. Or we do two meetings a year, and then obviously the, uh, subcommittees. We're meeting, I think, next Monday to talk about planning for our semiannual uh, okay. BAC meeting. So. Um, I think that's the only committee reports that I can think of right now. Well, we had a couple couple good things happen. We just had our board retreat. Oh, yeah. um, mm -hmm. What a week ago? Be will it be two weeks or one week on Wednesday? August fourth. August fourth. Yeah, two weeks. Really productive time working together. It was really fun. I told my husband. I said I could have hung out with those guys for another hour. It was just <laughs> fun to be fun to be with each other. I thought, um, and. What was the other thing I was going to share? <laughs> Just boom. <Yeah. laughs> oh, I can't think what it was. It'll come to me. And I, I it'll have one be more gone. thing I forgot. We had a safety and security meeting that was right. two oh, hours. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. How could I forget that? It was <laughs> no. It was. A, I felt like we could have kept going. We we had a nice meeting of the minds um, to really get on track and on the same place with the roles that children's services play, um, mental health, um, reporting, um, services. I mean, I'm just doing kind of a quick overview of making sure that communication as well. It was it was at the safety center, so we always include, um, you know, Chief Fisher um, oh, yeah. and uh, Scott Rotolo and then um, other members of this um, committee, just really kind of reviewing and making sure that we're doing we're all on the same page as to the role we play mm -hmm. with kiddos that can be in some tough spots, but mm -hmm. that was a nice meeting. Um, I, and that was, you know, two hours. Felt yeah. like it kind of flew by, but yeah. um, so. I, I thought of what the other thing was. I <laughs> spoke to Kiwanis last week. Um, I was invited to speak um, to explain the role of a board member. Um, and the handout that I had given to the board, um, I, used, I used the points that um, Kim Miller-Smith pointed out in there and I've, I've gotten a lot of really positive comments on our board work congratulations on the way we're working together um, I got a couple really nice emails saying that these are points that any person who works on any board can can use um, so passing on the gratitude of these community members who appreciate what our board's doing. So that was that was encouraging. I was nervous as could be, 
but one of my former students in one of my very first years of teaching showed up with her dad and <laughs> she turned around and looked at me and it was like, oh yeah, the sun just came out. <laughs> Carly's nice. here. Yeah, it was, it was awesome. So um, I started my speech with an anecdote about Carly and then, we're, then we were good to go. So give me a student any day. <laughs> So yeah, if we don't have anything else, and we don't have an executive session tonight, we don't. I guess I will. I'll take the I'll take the mic for two minutes to okay. just talk about yeah, you know. Do. So Wednesday's our first day of school. Yep. Um, Edgewood will be on the same schedule. Um, parents, if uh, you know, give uh, maybe give a couple extra minutes yep. getting there that first day. Really at any building, but definitely at you know Edgewood, we'll, we'll have you know, all three grades at the same time, yeah. traffic wise, you know, there. So I, I think that's, you know, just something to, um, you know, to, to think about. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so, and that was the energy today that, that I think was the most exciting with our staff mm -hmm. uh, is that, you know, uh, we get to teach kids again yep. in person um, and, and start that on Wednesday. And so really excited about that. You know, a couple weeks ago, we had kind of the Friday the sports kickoff and then the band played and you know we've got a actual game here with Oroville on Friday night apparently I, I give a plaque this, at some point this Friday night yes yeah. is our first mm -hmm. it's at, at it's at Oroville okay yep okay. so I talked to John Ritchie today and there's the tradition is there's a uh, plaques handed out to yeah. each team so yeah uh, exci excited to, yeah. to you know just kind of don't wear anything red I, I won't no, I actually gave no, most no, of my no. red stuff away good so. <laughs> burn it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah. So just Wednesday, start of school. You know, uh, yeah. if you see kids walking, you know, to the bus stop, things like that. Just you know, um, be careful out there. And ex excited to have them back. Yep, yeah. absolutely. That's going to be good to see those big yellow buses going again. Mr. Tudor, your comment about Edgewood's schedule reminded me. There's also a diff uh, change in drop-off pickup at the high school. I think it's mostly pickup. Well, there are 10 minutes, uh, the high school didn't change, the... Uh, uh, the route, though. Oh, yes. Yeah, that, the, where they're doing that. At, yeah, yeah, I think it's primarily, if I read it correctly, the pickup route, uh, instead of coming in and lining up um, along the Galt entrance, parents who are picking up are now to enter... I really hope I'm getting this right from memory. The well, you know, you probably know better than I do. Well, not, not as much as not as much as you <laughs> I have a great. freshman this year. That's why I paid attention. <laughs> but the parents are to enter through the um, entrance to the parking lot that's furthest west, so closer to Oak Hill Park, oh, okay. and then you come up and drive like a big oh, rectangle right. through the parking lot sure. and pick gotcha. the kids up, so that uh, and you pick them up in front of the Fallis Field entrance oh. and come through the middle of the parking lot so that I, I assume this is because a lot of the athletic buses line mm -hmm. up along Galt there to pick mm -hmm. up the athletes and it was always a oh yeah a Probably big yeah. congestion so um, our new principal sent that out not long ago so that people were aware I think I think primarily the changes were with pickup not with drop off gotcha I yeah. hope I got that right. And that's a reminder that you can go onto our website and go to the transportation page and you can find your, your, your bus child's yeah. bus information right. as well. Right. Anything else for the good of the cause? All right, I need a motion to adjourn. So move. <laughs> oh. Second. <laughs> Amy, if you would call the roll. Dr. Boone? Yes. Dr. Kanapik? Yes. Ms. Schantz? Yes. Mrs. Herman? Yes. Mr. Stabneser? Yes. All right. Thank you. See you next Tuesday. Thank you.